talk towards me you know. yeah, sorry okay I Mr. enlisted Stewart. in the Navy April 1943 because I was about to be drafted and I wanted the Navy I was married and had one child a month and a half old I was sent to Great Lakes and from there I volunteered for submarine navies but I was deje rejected because I was hit with a club earlier and it mashed all the bones and partially filled my breathing area. All rejects went to the amphibious force. I went to Solomons, Maryland and was put on an LCI. An LCI is a boat made of the thinnest metal and a rifle shell would go through one side and out the other. It was made for in invasion purpose landing only about 23 uh, feet wide, 150 feet long, had a crew of 20 to 24. After two weeks training, we went to Barber, New Jersey, where we picked up the 538, outfitted it, came back to Chesapeake Bay as a trading ship. We got called from there to Norfolk, Virginia, to run escort for a convoy of 150 merchant ships headed for the Mediterranean. After a real rough ride, we managed to get south of the Azores Islands, where the LCIs left the convoy to head to England. The second day out, we run into a horrible storm, and as I was strapped to my bow gun in the bow, a huge wave about three stories high appeared, and I thought, this is the end. But our little ship run up like a leaf over the top, and then dropped kaboom. After several hours of this, it started to break in two. And uh, shortly after that, uh, the pumps wouldn't take care of it. The captain said, well, we have about three minutes to live. But miraculously, the storm abated. We made it into the lee of the Azor Islands, where a minesweeper came alongside and welded us back together. We continued on to England. That was a time of 21 days. We went up the river from Plymouth, England, to a little town called Saulash. There was a bridge across the river, and all the food that came from land's end transported. The Germans knew this, so they come to bomb it every night. It was our job to defend it, which we were able to do. I was there several weeks when I was transferred to the staff of Flotilla 12, but there was a mix-up somehow on the way and I wound up in an army survivor camp. They had no place tents, so they sent me to a sheep barn up on the hill. It had a roof, and then open, and then mangers. I slept in the manger under straw for about a week. When I went to eat, I got in line, I had no gear. When the, I got the cook, I told him, he cut the top out of a uh, pet milk can, and rinsed it in a barrel of water, put hot cake syrup, and found a half of a spoon, about that long, and uh, said, when you finish that, you don't have to get in line. When I finished that up, I said, I like coffee. He rinsed the can out in the same barrel, put the coffee in, and that's the way I ate for a week, at which time I was reunited with the Flotilla 12 staff. We went on to the flagship, the 414, along with General Sands and General Gerhardt and their staff. Went down the river and uh, on the 5th and started for the coast of France. We couldn't go very fast, it was very rough, but we arrived off the coast of France and at a given signal headed in to the beach at Flanks B. This was Omaha Beach. As we neared the beach, the bodies were so thick in the water and in our own blood that we could hardly get through. They stopped us and took small boats and took the general and his staff off because all the ones that were getting off were slaughtered as they get, went down. The uh, 538 that I had been on already beached and uh, there was water in between. The Germans had done a channel when the tide went out and uh, to trap us. So the tallest man on the 538 went down, swam through there with a rope tied to the ship. Then as the troops got off, 
they had a, their arm over the, that and they could struggle through the deep and get on to the beach where the most of them were killed. We stayed there in that uh, harbor area and our ship was made harbor control. Every night the Germans had come over and bombed us but we escaped. We had bushels of shrapnel all over the deck but we were not hit directly. The water being so rough we sank merchant ships after they were emptied in a semicircle to break the water. Then uh, we were taking the crews off of this when an 88 opened up on us and dropped a shell right off our bow. The captain ordered the crew to cast off and they didn't so we cut the lines and the next shell was right midship. By that time we had moved out the third hit right where we had been. That's the last time the shot because the battleship Texas was out about two miles had zeroed in and they fired, hit that gun in place and a whole clip developed in fire. We, after we were done this tour we went out in the channel where they were putting a floating pier. They had four stanchions had a double down with a 20 foot tide. The uh, merchant out sea going ships could unload there without having to do it twice. When it was completed, tanks, trucks, and infantrymen, 24 hours went ashore on the floating bridge. About two days after it was an operation, another storm came. And this was worse than any of the others. It took ships our size and tore them apart. Literally, uh, bodies and ships and all. And uh, we would have been in the same plight had we not been tied up. After uh, about a day of this, an intense moor, and they told us we would have to cast off, so we knew that was the end of us. But just then, a destroyer appeared on the horizon. We signaled our plight. They come in and threw us a line and towed us out in the channel until it was, where it was calmer. We made our way back to England, where we remained till the war was over. When the war was over, our flotilla was selected to come back to the state. The rest of the LCIs were given to the British government for scrap metal. We were the smallest boat to cross under our, uh, that type, and we weren't supposed to. We were supposed to be piggyback. Was this the boat you were serving yes. on? Yes. <laughs> if you, uh, so, uh, when we got back to the states, we didn't have a good way of navigating, and as we got close to the shore, we knew that, but we didn't know where, so we dropped anchor. 